What's up, Steelers Nation? And welcome to the Black and Gold Fan Show, a show by a fan for the fans. I'm your host, Chris G. Here we go. Oh, that's a hell of a show. You need to watch that on a weekly basis. I'll check it out. I, mean, I hear it's pretty good. Steelers Nation, welcome back to the Black and Gold Fan Show. This is episode three. I'm so happy that you're joining me today. I appreciate you. I uh, also appreciate if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Please leave comments. I mean, I want to be interactive with this channel and with this show. Uh, let me know your thoughts, your opinions, uh, anything. I want this to go back and forth. I just want you to just listen to me talk. I want to hear your, like I said, hear your thoughts, hear your opinions. Uh, so leave a comment and make sure you share the show also. So the NFL draft is one week away. Uh, things are really heating up. Uh, we're getting excited. At least I am. I know I like this time of year when the draft comes around. In between the uh, end of the season and before the draft starts up, it's pretty... It's not too much going on if you're not signing a ton of free agents. I mean, we made a lot of free agent moves. I should say a lot. We made some big free agent moves. But I have been overly impressed about the totality of what we did. I mean, we signed a key few players. Like Patrick Queen was a big signing coming in. I like the Sean Elliott signing coming in, uh, bringing over the punter, uh, Cameron Johnston, bringing him over. So we have some quality moves, but I still, there's definitely more, more left. Like I said, we're going to the season with without a center, without a wide receiver too, without a nickel corner at the point. So we still have a lot of work to do, but um. Obviously, that stuff's going to get taken care of in the draft. I don't know how much will be addressed, but some major parts will be addressed during the draft. So while we're on that, uh, some more pre-draft visits have came in. I believe now the Steelers are at their total of 30 visits. So they have all 30 visits either scheduled or have taken place already. As we talked about before, each team gets 30 visits, uh, 30 pre-draft visits that are allowed. Uh, not including their local visits. So we'll go over some of the players that have been brought in. We have uh, Lad McConkey, the receiver out of Georgia. A uh, really good player. Um, I've been hearing he'll probably go high second round. Maybe late first round, but I think I've been hearing he'll go high second round. Good size, 6 feet, 186. Ran a 4 3 9 40. So he has some speed. He's an excellent route runner. I've been hearing comparisons to Antonio Brown. Um, not sure. I'm, I don't think they're saying he's going to be the receiver Antonio Brown was, but his game is like his. Uh, very fluid route runner, good hands, uh, good runner after catch. Somebody that I can see replacing a Deontay Johnson. Now, again, not saying he will be the level receiver Deontay Johnson is. Maybe. Maybe he'll surpass what DJ was. But a good player to pair up opposite of George Pickens. You know, we need another starting quality player to add to that room. And I see that player going to be a, uh, my hope was a day two pick. But you never know. It could be a day one pick, a day two pick, or maybe we trade for a player. Speaking of trade, you know, the talks of Brandon Ayuk have been all around. I don't think a trade is going to happen. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if he was traded. From the 49ers standpoint, I don't think they're going to let it go. I have heard reports that the Steelers have been uh, aggressively targeting Ayuk, which I'm all for. Uh, there were rumors that he asked for a asked for a trade, but since then, his agent Ryan Williams has said those rumors are false. That he did not uh, ask for a trade. I actually said uh, get better sources to whoever leaked that out saying that I requested for a trade. But yeah, um, multiple sources. Uh, one that I follow a lot, uh, the Steel Curtain Network, their source, have been saying that the Steelers are very interested in trading for Ayuk. I believe Jerry Dulac also came out and said that the Steelers have been aggressively pursuing, pursuing Brandon Ayuk. Like I said, it makes sense. You need a receiver opposite of George Pickens. 
And right now, that guy is not on the roster. So I don't see why the Steelers wouldn't try to bring in somebody, especially like somebody the caliber as Brandon Ayuk. Now, if we do trade for Ayuk, I mean, he was, I believe the 49ers were, or rumored were asking for a first round pick. That would be pretty steep. Um, if we go into the draft and we give away our first round pick for a receiver, that puts things in a little, that puts you in a little trouble as far as what you want to do in the draft, especially as far as your trenches. Uh, another thing Jerry Dulac said that the Steelers would likely have to trade up for a center if they pass on one in the first round. And I agree with that. If you don't take a, a Graham Barton in the first round, which I believe he's probably the only center that would go in the first round, you're looking at having to trade up in round two to get a, a Zach Frazier or a Jackson Powers Johnson. Now, going back to his receiver room, another name that's been coming up is Courtney Sutton as he didn't report to his uh, workouts. Now, right now, the workouts are volunteer. So, it's not a major deal that he is not there. But it shows that there's there's something up. I don't think he's happy with his contract. He wants a bigger deal. I don't know if he wants an extension, but he wants a bigger deal. So, uh, for the moment, he's not reporting to the Broncos, uh, Broncos practices. Now, Sutton is somebody that makes sense. He won't require a high draft pick. I believe he may go for a third round pick or somewhere in that range, especially looking at what some of these other trades have been going on. Um, he's somebody that will fit in our receiver room. He's a big body receiver. I believe he's around, what, 6'4", 215 or so. So he should work out perfect in the Arthur Smith system. Now, I haven't followed Denver too much, so I don't know in depth too much about uh, Cortland Sutton so I don't know how much he is as far as a blocker but at the least he's a big body uh, possession receiver can make plays down the field uh, when we saw Russell Wilson of course we watched some of his film and a lot of his plays made down the field were were by uh, Cortland Sutton so that's somebody that I'd be interested in bringing in also we get, we get somebody whether it's like I said whether it's in the draft whether it's in for, uh, through a trade, I don't know what other free agents are still out there that would make a big impact on his room. You know, Tyler Boyd is still around, but he's not to the caliber of a Ayuk or a, a Cortland Sutton. But like I said, somebody needs to be brought in. Now, whether that comes to the draft or a trade, we don't know. Of course, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen in this draft. Nobody knows who we're going to pick in this first round. There are a lot of reports coming out that uh, that the Steelers will go offensive linemen early, which I think they will. I think they should. Uh, there are reports that a team source told ESPN's Matt Miller that the Steelers will select an offensive lineman at pick 20. Uh, he's been quoted to say, I can't tell you the player, but I can tell you it'll be an offensive lineman. I mean, I, that will work for me. We don't have a center. Uh, at least as a fan base, we're not happy with Dan Moore at tackle. I would like to see Roger Jones move over to left tackle and bring in a right tackle that's able to start. If we bring in a tackle that is not a day one day one pick, he's somebody that will be having a battle with, uh, with Dan Moore. So... I'm not sure how that'll work out. Because with Dan Moore being in his what fourth year, it'll be it'll be pretty tough for a rookie to come in and take his spot at that tackle position. Especially the way uh, the Steelers treat their rookies, you know, they bring them along slow. So Dan Moore has proven to be a starter in the NFL. Now whether we think he should be or not is a different story. But he's been a starter for a few seasons now. So to me it'll be hard for a rookie that is not a a first round pick or one of those very high caliber tackles to come in and, and take his spot. Now we brought in some uh, more offensive linemen for their pre-draft visits. Um, now they all won't be day one options. They're, there's a range that they 
of the athletes they brought in, a different level of caliber are brought in. Now we have a guard, Mason McCormick from South Dakota State has been brought in. Uh, tackle Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. He's somebody that I like. He's a right tackle, played right tackle. And he's a player that he won't be taken if we are sitting at 20. But I can see the Steelers taking him if they move down. If we trade down to like 26, 27, somewhere around there. I think Tyler Guyton is somebody that will be around that area. And somebody that could come in and challenge Dan Moore for that right tackle spot. I believe he's somebody that possibly could take that position. I've been hearing Tyler Guyton's a uh, little raw. And will need a little work. But uh, talented. And like I said, he's played right tackle. That's something that... I hope the Steelers bring in a right tackle to play that position instead of transferring somebody from left to right if they want Roger Jones to stay on the uh, to move over to the left side. Now, if we have a stud left tackle in the draft that drops to us and we can take him, I don't think there's an issue with leaving Roger at right and having a new left tackle. I mean, won't be as many pieces moving if it goes down like that, but... I just want the team to get the best line possible. Put these players in the best position to make this team as best uh, play to the best of its ability. Another tackle, Choi Fatanu from Washington. He's a left tackle. He smiles. He'll be a first round target. There's Blake Fisher from Notre Dame. He'll probably be a later round target and somebody that will compete with Dan Moore for that tackle spot. Now, I don't think he is a a level of talent the same as Tyler Guyton but he is somebody that definitely can challenge Dan Moore for that tackle spot and he's played right tackle that's something that will be in Dan Moore's uh, not a benefit to him if he tries to play left tackle I'm sorry if he moves from left tackle to play right tackle you have a player that's been playing right tackle in college for some years he has the advantage and we already heard Dan Moore saying that he doesn't really wish to play right tackle so we'll see how that goes and we also brought in a Travis Clayton tackle Travis Clayton for United Kingdom you know the NFL has their abroad program where they're bringing players from other countries which is I mean I like to see you want to give players all over the world a chance to show their abilities and be able to play at, in the NFL it should be limited to just players that played in college here Especially if we want to make the game more worldwide and more known. We need to bring in players from other parts of the world. I know if I lived in another country and there is a player that made it to the NFL, I'll probably, I might tune in a little bit more. Obviously, if I already have an interest in football. But it's like in the Olympics. You know, you, most of the time you root for your country. I feel like this would be the same way. Some centers that are brought in. I'm going to mess his name up. Hunter Norzad from Penn State, I believe. I believe his name is Norzad. If it's not, I apologize. Uh, center out of Penn State. And we have Zach Frazier, center from West Virginia. Now, he's, I think, the most experienced center out of this center group that we brought in. He'll probably be the safest pick because you know what you get from him. He may not have the highest ceiling, but he probably has a high floor. Um, great with his hands. He's a people mover. You no, know, he's been a four-time state wrestling champion, so he's great with leverage. But he's somebody that, obviously, if he comes in, he'll be the day one starter at center. And that's something that I, I hope and look forward to the Steelers doing is bringing in a, a day one starter. We also have Jackson Powers Johnson center from Oregon who came in uh, he was he's been the top center since the season started but lately his stock's been dropping I don't know if it's his medicals or other things coming up but as time's going on he's his stock has been dropping as far as where he's been projected to be drafted I mean he's at one point I believe he might have been a top 20 pick and then it moved down to late first round and I've seen him being selected as low as 47. So, 
But also, he's another player that will walk in and be our day one starting center, which is something that we, we desperately need since we don't have one on the roster. Excuse me. Also, we have Graham Barton out of Duke. Now, he is the, I guess I would say, outlier of the group. He is not a natural center, I don't believe. he, Or, let me say not a natural center. He hasn't played center the past few seasons. And he played center his freshman year at Duke. I believe because of injuries to other positions, he was forced to move to tackle and actually excelled at it. But, Graham Barton is a a freakish athlete. I mean, type of athlete like we saw in uh, Marquise Pouncey. Not saying Gray Barton is going to be Marquise Pouncey, but compare the type of athlete he is, he gives me that Marquise Pouncey vibes. Uh, his relative athletic score, his RAS score was 9.9 .9 out of a possible 10. I mean, that's almost perfect. That's the kind of athlete that can that is dynamic, can change a room. I mean, he can step in, be the leader of that line at center. And we need a a dominant center. And I believe Graham Barton can be that person. He's a big kid. He's what, 6'5", 3, 3, I'm not sure, 3'30", somewhere around there. But a an athletic monster, I would say. But somebody I think that would fit perfect in a type of offense that we want to run. Switching over to the defensive side, we brought in defensive lineman Christian Boyd for Northern Iowa. Now, he's not the tallest. I believe he's 6'2", 6'3", somewhere in that range, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But he is explosive, aggressive, and he is powerful. He's somebody I can see being a later round pick um, not going to be one of those day one or high day two picks. Somebody coming in later round. But he's somebody that can add depth to this defensive line that that we need. I'm not sure if he's going to be the type that can replace a Cam, Hay Cam Hayward once he uh, retires. But maybe somebody like a Larry Ogunjobi if his play doesn't get more consistent. Now, I like Larry O. I mean, he's a good player. But dealing with injuries over the past few seasons or play not being consistent all the time brings up questions of what are they going to do with him when his contract is up, which is pretty soon. Now, Christian Boy is somebody that can come in and be that depth piece that, that we need. We also have you know, Dean Lowry we signed. We brought back Fahoko. Uh, we lost Armin Watts. So be Christian Boy, maybe somebody that can replace him. I mean, Armin Watts did a great job. I, I expect Lowry to be more of that uh, player to replace him, but who knows we can get out of Christian Boyd. We also know we still have Keanu Benton, the, our stud rookie from last year. This D-line needs to get younger. We need to bring in some players that will carry the torch into the next generation. I feel like Keanu Benton will do a great job of that. He looks to be promising so far. But he's not going to be able to do it by himself. DeMarvin Leal seems like he's not working out in our system. I think the kid has talent, but he may not fit the type of defense that we run. Cornerbacks. Cooper DeGene from Iowa. The cornerback slash safety slash punt returner slash gunner. I mean, the versatile player that does it all. He's one of the most interesting players in this draft as he is very, very flexible in positions he's able to play. No, he can play inside corner. He can play outside. Like I said, he plays safety, returns punts. He's good size. He's 6'2", uh, just over 200 pounds. Ran a 4'4'3 at his personal workout, according to the 33rd team. You know, he is coming off an injury. That's why he didn't participate at the pro day, at his pro day in the combine. But he's shown he's athletic. He is, I mean, he's an athlete. He has great ball skills. I believe in 2022 and 23, he had seven interceptions. Five of those coming in 2022. But I think that's because in 23, I think teams just stopped throwing it towards him. I mean, if you have a guy that is athletic, he is, as the ball skills that he has, as dynamic he has, you're not going to throw to him too much. 
Test the other side. Go another direction. Uh, he'll probably fit in better as a safety in the NFL. Like I say, he's a little bit like six foot two or three. He's a little, little stockier than some of these corners you see. He's not as fluid, but he's a playmaker. So I can see him playing, definitely playing safety, definitely playing in the slot. But he's capable of playing on the outside, which makes him very attractive for teams looking for a corner, especially some like the Steelers who are looking for a, a nickel corner slash safety. And say so he also returns punts. He had a 70-yard punt return against Michigan State to win the game. Um, and along with play, uh, returning punts, he covers punts. I mean, he's a he plays a gunner. He goes down and can cover kicks, which Steelers are going to need, actually, with the loss of Miles Boykins and James Pierre. Now, right now, the Steelers don't have any gunners. I don't know if they'll use somebody like Darius Rush or or one of these receivers down on the depth chart, but that's a question we're going to have to answer uh, when time comes. Who's going to be the Gunners? Other corners we brought in were Benny Bishop of West Virginia and Daquan Hardy of Penn State. Now as we move on to our linebackers that were brought in, Peyton Wilson from NC State. Another uh, freak athlete uber athletic he's 6'4 233 ran a 4'4 I mean that sideline to sideline speed he's pretty good in coverage can cover tight ends can cover uh, big receivers that are in the slot or lined up uh, in line sneaky good against uh, I guess the run he able to blitz on third downs he's a good player I think he's somebody that we definitely match up or pair up with Patrick Queen. Now, I mean, if we had two inside linebackers that are dynamic, able to play in space, uh, fast, good tacklers, that's something that could set us up for years to come because we're going to need another linebacker to pair up with Queen as time goes on. I believe Land, uh, Elandon Roberts is almost 30, and he may be in the last year of his contract. Cole Holcomb is in his mid to late 20s. But he has some has uh, an injury history, which is something that's a concern with Peyton Wilson. Also, he has an injury history. I believe he had a quite a few seasons where he's had season-ending injuries. But 2023, he was able to bounce back and have a a healthy, productive year. We've also brought in Junior Colson from Michigan. A Good size and strength kid, 6'2", almost 240. Also plays sideline to sideline. Also, when you get kids from Michigan, you know they're... They should be able to play NFL ball. I mean, they have Harbaugh as their coach. I'm pretty sure he has an NFL-type system there at their school. So he's somebody that would be able to translate well to the NFL game. I mean, I don't want people to get uh, caught up over... What happened with Devin Bush? Because he was having a great rookie year and going to a sophomore year, he was playing well until his ACL injury. And then after that, I mean, it just, the wheels fell off. I mean, he just didn't look like the same player. Did the passion didn't look like it was there. Uh, and he didn't look as physical. He just wasn't the same player. But like I said, coming into the league, he looked like he was going to be that next thing that we were missing. So I know Patrick Queen is in. He looks like the the main linebacker for years to come for us, but it'd be nice if we could pair somebody up with him. Now to note with our uh, pre-draft visits, uh, quarterback Michael Penix, running back Dylan Johnson, and cornerback Sean Stevens, their visits did not happen. Uh, they didn't uh, they didn't bring him in. I didn't think Penix was a realistic option. I mean, obviously an option, but I didn't think he was a realistic player that the Steelers were going after. Same thing with Dylan Johnson. I mean, we have two running backs on the roster. Actually, three running backs on the roster. Two main ones with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. And we also have Cordero Patterson. Now, depending on what they do with Najee, 
and his fifth year option or his extension what's going to happen maybe that's the reason why they initially thought about looking at a running back but I do think Najee will be here for a few seasons longer I don't th I really think that the Steelers like him I know Tomlin likes him a lot uh, he's a player that I think they will keep around now whether he gets his fifth year option picked up or if he's extended we'll have to wait and see but I mean, that's just something that like I said we're gonna have to wait and see uh, while you're here please make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel and again leave comments uh, I'd like to hear your feedback so now that all the pre-draft visits have either happened or been scheduled I mean the only thing that left is a draft now there are so many directions the Steelers can go in this draft I mean none of them are right none of them are wrong and we won't know until it happens I know I have a preferred way that we start the draft I mean the way it seems like these big boards are trending if one of these top tackles like a Mims or a Fatanu or Fawaga are gone I would like to see the Steelers trade back trade back a few picks maybe grab somebody like a, a Tyler Guyton but if like Mims is there which I feel like he might be the might be the uh I want to say best option, but I feel like he'll be the most... I feel like he has the highest chance of being there at 20 out of these uh, out of these tackles. If, if, say, if somebody like him is there, then take the pick. But if these tackles are going, I think we should move back. Move back, take somebody like a Tyler Guyton. Because then in round two, you know, we can trade up to go get our center, like a Jackson Powers Johnson or a Zach Frazier. But also, I mean, I like Graham Barton a lot too. The only thing I fear with him is if we take him, it just costing our starting caliber tackle. But if you take a center like Barton, you know your offensive line, your center position is set. You don't have to worry about trading back up in the draft to get one. You don't have to worry about uh, one not falling to you. And also, I know the Steelers are higher on Dan more than us fans are I mean a lot of us are trying to run him out of town but they seem to like what he's doing now obviously I mean he's still the starter I mean he was a starter when Roger Jones came in never Roger Jones was never able to take his spot he ended up taking that right tackle spot uh, from Chooks so now like I said before if they if we do take somebody like Barton, we're going to have to grab one of those tackles in a later round. But you know, if the tackle is brought outside of day one, they're going to have to battle with Dan Moore. And again, I don't think Dan Moore is going to play bad enough to give up his spot to a rookie. We also know Roger Jones wants to be on that left side. So how much moving around does that create? If we start the season with Jones at right tackle, Moore at left tackle, now we have a rookie that comes in. If he's able to take over and show that he's able to play, he'll move to right tackle. And then we have Jones moving to left tackle. I mean, that's a lot of moving around going on during the season. I'd rather go into camp with Jones as the left tackle. We bring in a right tackle that'll battle for that spot and hopefully win it before the season starts. But either way, we need to take, I think, two offensive linemen within our first three picks and I anticipate the Steelers doing so I don't think they're going to wait too long to take those uh, those players especially center because after round two I don't think you're going to be able to get a center that's able to start day one now if we had a center on the roster like we picked up one of these free agents or made a trade for somebody that's able to come in and play I'd be more open to picking a center later in the draft but the way our roster stands right now, we need one early, and we need one that can come in and start. It's that time of year where mock drafts are going around. So Mel Kuyper, you know, uh, he had his latest mock draft, and he actually had the Steelers taking Graham Barton at 20. For the Steelers' second pick, he had Jalen McMillan going at 51. But something that was shocking to see once I saw it was he had centers going a lot later than expected. They had Jackson Power Johnson going at 47 
and Zach Frazier going at 57. Now, uh, when we first started, I, I didn't think any centers would make it past probably around 40, somewhere in that range. But we can't take a chance of hoping one of these centers fall to 47 or 57 if we are relying on the uh, a later pick to pick them. Like if we don't grab somebody in the first round, like a Barton, or if we don't trade up in the second round to get them. I mean, that's not gonna be something that will work out for the team if we sit back and wait and say we pick a a tackle first round, we take a receiver or somebody second round or a corner second round, and we're sitting around waiting and all these centers are gone, we're gonna be SOL. Now hopefully, like I said, hopefully we make those picks early that are advantageous to us, like a tackle early, or if we don't get one of those premium tackles straight back, take a guide early, and then we're able to move back up in the second round and take one of these centers. I mean, time will tell. We'll see what happens when this draft comes. Now, to change topics a little bit, I guess not really changing topics. We're getting off our pre-draft visits. Uh, something I saw, uh, I think it was yesterday, that a recent report came out that an assistant coach said this about Drake May. He said, I like May, but when I see the amount of work it would take to have him reach his potential, we'll all be fired first. Now, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about a coach saying that he doesn't think he'll be able to do enough with a player to turn into a player that they should be? I mean, he thinks he was scared of losing his job before, before that player is able to reach their potential. Now, I get it. I mean, it's a cutthroat business. If, it, if a team is looking at a a franchise, potential franchise quarterback and a coach, a lot of times they're going to go with that quarterback. But that's one of the reasons why I love Mike Tomlin. He's someone that's not scared to coach. He's not, not, I'm not saying these other coaches are scared to coach, but he's somebody that loves to coach. He loves to challenge. Remember him saying like after Ben retired, he was excited about this new process of having to coach a new quarterback, having to uh, try to develop his new quarterback. Now, we don't mean him personally develop uh, the quarterback that was brought in, like hands-on, but helping him be an NFL-level quarterback. Now, I don't think we did any favors for our quarterback that was brought in with the coordinator we had and the things that went on, but... I know Mike Talbot is not running away from the fact that he'll put his job on the line in order to help this player. And also, I like that the, the Roonies were able to pull the trigger when they realized that our quarterback that was here wasn't the guy. I mean, you can't, you can't hang on so long hoping that it's going to work out. That's like the saying, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, respecting, expecting different results. At a point, that seemed like that's what we were doing. So whether it was a quarterback that spoke up and said that he wanted out, or if it was the coaches that felt like he wasn't the one, however it happened, changes were made. And now we have a whole new quarterback room with Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, and, and Kyle Allen which I'm excited about. I'm excited to see what this season holds uh, as far as this quarterback room. I mean, it should be a good competition between the top two. I feel like Justin Fields will, will push for that starting spot. I 100% believe Russell Wilson will be the starting quarterback day one. But, I mean, if Fields plays like he can, especially in this Arthur Smith offense, like that could be dangerous. I'm not sure if he's going to see the field at any point if he is not the starting quarterback. I mean, I would like to see him in packages, but that can get tricky when you're playing a a quarterback in and out of the lineup every once in a while. 
I mean, they like to get their rhythm, especially if their rhythm's going. You don't want to mess that up with bringing somebody in for a package. But I do see him coming in to like some goal line type stuff. I mean, you get Justin Fields on the goal line. I mean, it's he's tough to defend because the way he can use his legs and the way the defense has to respect him. I mean, that opens a wide range of plays that are able to be run. I mean, there's one game. I forget who they were playing, but it was a handoff. It was a dive up the left side, and Fields carried out his fake to the left, and the middle linebacker went with Fields that almost left the hole wide open. I mean, things like that are what advantages you have when you have an athletic quarterback like a Justin Fields. Now, Russell Wilson is pretty similar, but he's nowhere near the athlete that Justin Fields is. I mean, he never was. But especially now being in his mid-30s, he's not the athlete he was. But I feel these two will, will push each other. And they have the perfect coach in Mike Tomlin to push them. I mean, he's he's a player's coach. Everybody says that he's a cheerleader. I, I, I hate hearing that, saying Tomlin's a cheerleader. He may not be the best coach as far as X's and O's, but he'll get your team ready. I mean, you can see how how prepared his teams are, especially when it comes to like AFC North ball. I know Ryan Clark was just on a podcast with uh, Patrick Peterson and, and Brian McFadden. And they were talking about how tough the AFC North is, but somehow the Steelers always find a way to beat those teams. And it's Mike Tomlin. Like I say, he knows how to get you ready for games, especially close games. Now we need a more dynamic offense That'll be able to put up points so we don't have to be in these one-score games all the time. But when we're in them, I have full faith in Tomlin to, to get the win. Also, him bringing players in. Players want to play for Coach Tomlin. Now, we've seen Patrick Queen said he was the reason. Uh, one of the main reasons he came over. I'm sure Justin Fields and Russell Wilson, Tomlin was one of the main reasons he came over. Now, I know Elliott. I know he just, the Steelers' brand is a big part of the reason he came to Pittsburgh and Mike Tomlin is that brand. So yeah, like there Tomlin gets a lot of a lot of flack for having won a playoff game in was it seven years? Which is which is deserved. I'm not I'm not the one that's gonna sit here and say that he's absolved from from everything that's been going on these past almost decade. But I don't think he should take as much of the blame as he does. Should he take some blame? Yes, definitely. I mean, he's the head coach. I mean, everything runs through him. So, yes, he definitely deserves some of the blame. But I just think there, it's a little too much put on him. But anyway, that's my coach. And I, I like Coach Tom as a coach. And I think he'll be here for a while. Actually, there's a report in the Athletics saying that he's supposed to sign an extension on July 25th. That's a very specific date. I never heard a, a date that far out saying that somebody's going to sign an extension or something of that nature on a certain date. I know uh, Jeff Hartman of the Steel Curtain Network said that a, an extension is is coming, but not sure when that'll take place. But anyway, Mike Tomlin will be here for at least a few more seasons, what, it's, what it looks like. So with that, I'm going to end the show on that note. So I, mean, I, I thank y'all so much, especially if you made it this long. Please, again, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're listening to the audio version, remember, uh, you can find me on YouTube at cgillis underscore Steelers. Uh, that is also my Instagram page. And you can find me on Twitter at cgillis2021. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can catch this on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And stay tuned for more videos to come. And like I always say, stay blessed, stay positive. Here we go.